tonight. Um, I just, seeing all of you in this room, you know, usually we come in here and there's not a lot of people. And it really makes me realize how large this gallery is and what an amazing space it is. Um, and that we were so fortunate to have this incredible group of works of art um, in such a wonderful museum in Toledo. And I feel very lucky to um, be a part of this organization and, and a part of this community. I'm just going to finish off tonight by talking briefly about the Great Gallery and <coughs> Baroque Art in particular. And Baroque Art is basically the art of the 17th century. So it fits very nicely into a uh, time period. And this room basically um, is, is a series of works that were done in the Catholic countries um, with a couple of, well, maybe one or two exceptions. Um, so these works of art were painted by and large for um, Catholic patrons, uh, either members of the church or very wealthy members of the community who had a strong Catholic connection. And so as we look around this room, we, we see a variety of paintings, a lot of religious subjects, but some um, mythological ones. And when um, Larry decided to move the paintings that he did to this end of the gallery, I was delighted because it made my part of the presentation very easy, because otherwise I'd be having you all swiveling around the room, um, and this is quite convenient. Uh, what we have up in the front of the room are um, Italian paintings of the Baroque period, uh, with the exception of, well, this painter is French, but um, he painted in Rome for most of his career. And so we have a wonderful collection of the three major schools of Italian painting of the 17th century, now located at this end of the room. Um, Artemisia Gentileschi, who painted the work um, on the far wall, uh, with also the subject of Lot and his daughters. We originally purchased that painting um, by Cavallino, who was one of her students. And um, in the past decade, it was determined that, indeed, the painting was not by Cavallino, but by Artemisia Gentileschi, which um, really what we were quite delighted was that because she's a much more famous artist. So what I'd like you to, to notice, and I hope that after this, everybody will come up and take a look at these paintings uh, and really get close to them um, without touching them, of course. <laughs> uh, the Artemisia um, is painted by a woman, and she paints Lot and his daughters in a very, very different way, as Father Basic pointed out, than where Chino did. Um, certainly in where Chino's paintings, we see the daughters in quite a different light than Artemisia does. Lot really looks like he's taking the lead um, in the Artemisia painting. And she has a very interesting biography, which we can't go into tonight, but you should look her life up because she's quite interesting. And I think that her personal life, um, it was always reflected in the works that she did. So um, I'm going to try and make you all go home and look it up on the internet or your art history books or something because um, I, think, I think that she's portraying the subject, which was a very popular subject. I think Larry told you that this is the third version that Guercino painted of Lot and his daughters. So was the subject was much in demand at the time, and um, Artemisia also painted that subject. Um, so she represents, even though she was originally um, lived in Rome, and her father was a Roman painter, uh, she eventually moves to Naples. She goes to Florence for a while, then to, and ends up in Naples. And um, probably that painting was painted in Naples uh, in the 17th century, further on in her career. We had another Neapolitan painting right next to it, so it was quite a wonderful grouping because I think you can see some relationships between the two in the drama and the lighting, and certainly Baroque paintings always have a very dramatic uh, sensibility to them. In contrast, Renaissance paintings, uh, which generally were very <clears throat> calm and um, very highly classical, these artists bring back the classical, um, but with a much more dynamic composition. And certainly, of the paintings that are here, um, probably the new one has the most dynamic composition of, of all of them, um, with sharp diagonals, and that's always a part of the world painting, and rich.
rich, very, very um, deep colors, which sort of bring back the idea um, of the Renaissance. One other thing I want to mention, though, is that Bertino also belonged to the same school of painting, the Bolognese school, uh, that Guido Reni uh, participated in. And the Bolognese school was originally started by the Caracci brothers. And the Caracci were uh, major painters in Bologna, the city of Bologna, who wanted to bring back the tradition as part of the counter-reformation of the High Renaissance. So they were much more traditionalist, as opposed to the Roman school, which followed Caravaggio. And we, while we don't have a painting by Caravaggio, and I don't think we'll probably ever get one, um, <laughs> this is a fabulous example of the Caravaggisti, or the followers of Caravaggio. And this painting was done in Rome by Valentin de Bologna, who was a French painter. But in it, you can see all of the qualities of an early Caravaggio. This drama, this strong light, this almost photographic sense um, in painting. That was sharply in contrast with the Bolognese school. And I think if you look at the Gita Reni and you look at the uh, Guercino, you can clearly see the differences between the Roman school and the Bolognese school. Now, by the time you get to Naples, which was sort of towards the end of the 17th century, you get a mix of people. Um, because Naples had been under Spanish rule, and there were lots of artists going through. Some who had been in Rome, some who came from the continent. And so the Neapolitan school um, brings some of the elements of Rome to them, of the, the school of Caravaggio, but they have their own particular flavor. It's sort of a, a blend of the various styles uh, that were going on in the 17th century. So it's wonderful to have, really, the representations of the three major schools all at this end of the room at this particular time. Um, I know that some people were upset or wondering about weddings, <laughs> which often take place at this end of the room. And, uh, <laughs> wedding that's going to take place and we'll, we'll switch things around. <laughs> so um, Rod is going to finish out uh, our program tonight and I want to thank Father Basic for coming. You were just wonderful. Uh, I want to thank Larry for pursuing this fabulous event. We are all just so delighted to add it to the wonderful works in this room and I just am overwhelmed that you all came tonight. And I thank you very much, and Rob will finish us off.